Don't let your backsplash be an afterthought. It may seem like one of the easiest parts of designing a kitchen, but there are a few questions you should really ask yourself before pulling the trigger. What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the studio. Let's talk backsplashes and some important questions and considerations to help make the decision just that much easier. First, where should the backsplash end? Now, I really think a backsplash needs a definitive ending point. And this is a particularly important at the top. Now, there are three main endings I like to think about. First, short and stubby, running three to six inches above the countertop. This is done with the same material as the countertop and looks clean and minimalistic. Second, up to the cabinets or open shelving. This is a natural endpoint and what most would consider standard when it comes to the backsplash. It generally doesn't stand out from the crowd, but it's functional, clean, and doesn't look out of place. Finally, all the way to the ceiling. This provides grandeur and helps draw the eye upward, either accentuating high ceilings or making shorter rooms feel taller. Outside of the first option, the other two have distinct endpoints, a clear transitional place where it makes sense both visually and functionally to have a change in materials. In the case of the first point, this is largely done for aesthetic reasons and to appeal and fit an overarching design style. Something we'll get into in another question. You also don't need to have just one of these. You can mix and match different endpoints within the same kitchen. In this kitchen, I like how they used a short stubby piece along the window wall where the sink is located and then transitioned this into a taller piece of slab that goes all the way up underneath the countertops on the back range wall. I like the use of different colored subway tiles in this kitchen. Not only do the different colors help separate the coffee bar from the main kitchen, it also serves to complement and highlight the true focal point, which is those countertops. Next question to ask yourself is, what material do I plan to use for my backsplash? The type of material, whether it's tile, stone slabs, formica panels, the list really goes on, can all give some indication on how to design your backsplash and in particular where it should end. For example, if you really want tile, then a low minimalist backsplash three to six inches off the countertop doesn't really make sense. This means running it up to the cabinets or maybe the ceiling. If you really want a full matching slab, then all the way to the ceiling may not be feasible and really may not look great aesthetically. The material you ultimately want for your backsplash can play a role in the rest of your kitchen design, even down to cabinet layout. Now for some, this might be worthwhile and for others, it might not. I find stone slab backsplashes work best when they're confined or restricted within nooks in the kitchen. This means designing your cabinets and your kitchen in such a way to create these focal points throughout the space. In contrast, I find tile allows for a little more freedom when it comes to your backsplash, creativity if you will, and where it can be located. This allows you to expand it, run it to the ceiling, cover larger areas without impacting your budget in the same way that stone slabs will. Finally, what type of aesthetic or design style am I looking to achieve in my particular space or kitchen? The aesthetic of the space can help determine what is best suited when it comes to your backsplash. And while I don't think this should be the single most determining factor of how to go about planning your backsplash, it should be considered. If you think about transitional kitchens, most don't feature dominant slabs all the way up the wall. Alternatively, ultra-modern kitchens are far more likely to continue the countertops into a backsplash slab than use intricate tile. Take this rather traditional kitchen. The basket weave behind the range and stone subway tile round out the entire design. If these were replaced with a large stone slab, you would lose the traditional aesthetic of this kitchen. Think of these questions more as 1A, 1B, and 1C. They aren't mutually exclusive and they'll all play a role and they'll all impact how you go about designing both your backsplash and your kitchen. Now, as I mentioned earlier, you can even combine several of the different options into your own space. I love using full slabs for continuity from the countertop into the backsplash. However, I don't think they look great all the way up to the ceiling. I far prefer the impact they create when used sparingly, whether it is to highlight a range area, also making it easier for cleaning, or along a long wall. The slabs are bookended in this kitchen, they end at a shallow stone shelf, and force the eye laterally across the entire kitchen. I also like running tile backsplashes all the way to a ceiling as long as there is an area where it makes sense. 
Typically, the area needs to be wide enough where the tile can provide a little bit of impact. This could be above a sink and around the adjacent window, or in a range nook bordered by tall cabinets. Finally, if you have an open-ended kitchen, that is a space where your backsplash just abruptly ends before transitioning to another room, I find it far easier, and I think it looks a lot better, to do this with tile than with thick stone slabs. Hopefully this points you in the right direction when it comes to your backsplash. It gives you something concrete to ask yourself, and maybe, just maybe, makes one decision just a little bit easier along your kitchen design journey. As always, thanks a ton for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.